Hey guys, so in this week's episode, I want to go over a question that's um, being asked a lot. Uh, a lot of my friends who is trying to, you know, make better a cup of latte, a better cup of coffee, just like myself, they want to know how to make better latte art. Now, as much as I wish that I can show you guys how good I am, however, I'm actually still a work in progress. I'm still trying to improve what I'm trying to do. You're getting there. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, thank you. Thank you for, for thinking that. Um, but I always go to Diana when I have questions like this so I thought you know what's better than just having her here and explain to you guys just like how she explained to me yeah. uh, how she improved her latte art and just how to overall you know yeah. get, get a better tasting latte at home well thank you so much for that I I feel honored of being here <laughs> but yeah let's yeah. let's talk about let's talk about latte art why not so many think whenever it comes to latte art many think latte art is just a decoration something that is on top of a coffee and is just there for looks but actually serves a much more important purpose mm -hmm. it shows uh, that a barista this person that's making you a cup of coffee knows how to properly combine espresso and milk and this person knows how to bring out the flavors in both of the parts mm -hmm. that's why it's actually so important i wanted to start with a little disclaimer latte art may come off difficult especially at first and I assure you, it is. Don't feel discouraged if you try once or twice and it doesn't go through. Please try again. Don't give up and continue trying. I mean, when I was starting in, in the industry and I've been working over for four, four years now, it took me three months. I was working three, four times a week and it took me three months to just get consistent, centered to the cup hearts. So yeah, take, take yeah. your time. I remember you told me how important it is to just start with hearts. Yes. Because I think, uh, you know, myself included uh, a lot of us want to just start getting into making really pretty rosettas tulips because <laughs> those are ig worthy right that's that's that, that's what matters <laughs> it's all for the ig man. right <laughs> But I, I remember you told me, you know, a couple of weeks back that it's very important to start with hearts. So that's what I have been doing. Good. Uh, I've been getting better hearts. And then later on, I guess we just connect the hearts to the more complicated designs, right? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's what my manager when I started told me. Like, Diana, no matter what you do, you only are going to do hearts now. Don't even try to go into any more complicated stuff. All right. Okay, so how about this? Uh, I'm going to go grab a, a cup and a pitcher and let's just, you know, uh, let's just start this explanation. Let's do it. At the base of every pour, there are two main parts. There is the milk steaming, and then there is the actual pouring milk into the espresso. I think for me personally, a difficult part was getting the milk consistent every single time that I steam it. And mm -hmm. um, I think you're gonna make a whole separate episode on it, right? Right, um, so I am planning on making another episode just focusing directly on steaming milk mm -hmm. and get a, getting a better base for for, for your latte. Mm -hmm. Look forward to that video. Uh, once that, that is ready, you will see it either on the links on the corner here or in the description down below. Down below. Yep. All right, so today we will focus on the actual technique behind the pouring. Before we move on to the machine, I want to first talk you through the actual motion of what you want to do when you have espresso and when you have milk. So these are both empty, don't worry about it. <laughs> um, so so uh, let's say you, whenever you begin, you always want to make espresso first. You don't want to steam your milk and then leave it on the counter and then go make an espresso. So you have your espresso shot over here and then you have milk that you steamed in the pitcher. Uh, you want to tilt the cup a little bit, maybe at a 45 degree angle so it's not 90, it's not just straight. Uh, you want to swirl your milk in the pitcher and you want to slowly add a little bit of milk in it. What that does is it introduces milk into the espresso uh, so that you're not uh, combining something, uh, espresso which is so thick and the milk which is so thin. So you pour a little bit, you swirl it in the cup and then uh, you can continue pouring your milk in. You pour a little bit of milk, you stir it and then you go in. You are trying to slowly incorporate the milk. Uh, you want to not just pour it straight into the middle or on the side, you want to make a swirling motion with it. And then once your cup is about three-fourths full, you want to stop. And this is where you will be beginning to make designs. So today I will show you how to make three of them. There's a heart, there's a rosetta, and there's a tulip. We will start with the heart because that's, as mm -hmm. we said, the most important to master. So for the heart, uh, you want to start pouring into the center of the cup and slowly and slow, slowly pushing it. Uh, at the same time, you want to be tilting the cup. So, so tilting it back to a, a exactly a, a back in the, into the 90 degree angle. Yeah. So 
you're introducing your milk. Once your cup is almost full, you stop and then you pour it into the center, tilting the cup straight. And all the way in the end, you want to raise your cup and cut through. Yeah. I think the raising part is, is something that a lot of people miss. Mm -hmm. uh, for the longest time, I think I wasn't raising, raising the, the, the cup at the end to cut yeah. off to make that nice finish. I think that's why I was keep getting a blob at mm -hmm. the end of it, right? You have a nice, nice circle and you try to make that heart into like a nice sharp angle towards the end. Exactly. And I think I was just pushing it through and then uh, in the end, like a thick cloud of foam just poured out and then, yeah. and then you get this nasty blob of I don't know what it is. <laughs> All right, so why don't we add some real milk into the cup and let's show us how it's done. Let's do it. All right, we pulled a shot of espresso and also steamed our milk. To pour the heart, begin by introducing a bit of milk and giving it a swirl. Pour it at angle until the cup is about three quarters full. Stop. Pour milk straight into the center at the same time while tilting the cup. Raise and cut through. And that's the heart. All right, we have our milk and espresso ready to pour the tulip. Beginning is the same. You first introduce the milk, swirl, and begin pouring at an angle. Tulip simply is multiple hearts on top of each other. We have first and second hearts, which we don't cut through, and end with a third heart, Raise and cut. All right, now for the rosetta. With our milk and espresso ready, begin again by introducing milk and giving it a swirl. Slowly pour the milk. Start with a heart and pour side to side towards the top. And with a heart, raise and cut through. Thank you so much Diana for showing us uh, how to do all those things. I think it went pretty well and hopefully it will help you guys make better latte art at home. But before we say our goodbyes, what are some most common mistakes that you think people make when, you know, especially for home baristas? Yeah, of course. I think I can think of a couple and we actually mentioned one of them a little earlier mm -hmm. uh, and that was uh, people, whenever they finish the pour, you always have to raise your cup and then and then you want to cut through your drink. So mm -hmm. one mistake that people do is they don't raise their cup to cut through like what you started to do exactly. Okay. And uh, so they make this really beautiful drink, but if they don't raise the cup and then cut through in a tiny in a in a thin stroke, then you just ruin the entire design. So you really need to be mindful of your motion and your technique mm -hmm. um, in that in that regards. And the second mistake is um, is people go too fast. And mm -hmm. that was actually the mistake that I, I'm still working on four years later, and I'm still working on it. I pour very fast and if you pour very fast you don't have a lot of control over milk mm -hmm. over espresso over your drink if you pour very fast then you end up uh, filling your cup all the way up or you making half of the design that you wanted to make so i would recommend to all of you to take it slow from the beginning so that when you um, in the future go into more complex designs you don't find myself where i am right now pouring <laughs> way too fast <laughs> so i think it's very important to fix your mistakes earlier on before they develop into bad habits yeah. i'm still trying to fix some things that i i think i did wrong since the beginning and, and and let me tell you it's very very hard to do so especially with something that's like muscle memory pretty much exactly yeah right? i mean it's been four years for me and i'm still in this and the trying pour. to fix the same mistakes that i started yeah. with so don't get into bad habits <laughs> yeah, your speed pour and my blob <laughs> there you go. <laughs> well, anyways, I really hope you guys found this episode to be helpful. Uh, you know, Diana has helped me a lot, just overall improving my yeah. latte art. So I really appreciate her being here. Thank you again. Yes, and of course. <laughs> thank, you. thank you. Don't uh, feel discouraged. Try again. Yeah. And of course, if you guys do like my content, if you find it to be helpful, and you guys want to support us, please subscribe, like the video, list any questions or comments down below. We will address them in a future video. Sure. Or some love. We'll take that as well. <laughs> okay. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye. All right, so why don't we uh, put some real milk in this and you show us how it's done. Let's do it. All right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>